Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then hi, my, my name is Erica, and today I'm going to be talking a bit about f disability and f family vlogging and why I think it's a very problematic mix. So I have a few videos on my channel regarding family vlogging, whether it's about like the Dad Challenge podcast coverage of family vloggers, whether it's about sp specific family vloggers or wh whatever. I don't have a lot on specific family vloggers because I don't like to consume family vlogging content because it's just kind of icky in my uh, opinion but anyway so this is something I've kind of wanted to do for a while and since there's not much going on in the YouTube s sphere right now that I feel like I need to talk about I figured I would do this video now so there's a number of of uh, family vlogging ch channels that that have uh, either disabled children or are somehow involved in the disabil in the disability s sphere. Some notable ones, and this is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> There's probably even more that I don't know about. But some of the big ones are f f ha ha Hothering Autism, the uh, McLeod Ham, and one that recently came to my attention is the Da Ha Hurdy Dozen. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. I've heard people say it in different ways, but I've heard a lot of people say it that way. So, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. But, my, my problem with this is obviously, if you can't tell, I am d disabled. I was born with a neuromuscular d disorder called cerebral palsy, which obviously it's neuromuscular, so it is brain damage that affects my muscles and my muscle control. It also affects my reflexes and like sensory type stuff. Like I'm very sensitive to loud no ho ho noises and I have a really bad startle reflex and obviously it also affects my speech. And just as I said that, my speech got affected. But anyway, so this is an issue that's really Im important to me, specifically since I've had my disability since birth. So I, I am well aware of what it's like to grow up with a disability in a world that is ableist and not accommodating towards disabled people. And I understand the argument that parents like to do family vlogging if they have a disabled child to bring awareness to disability issues or to um, to even feel, to even help other parents of disabled children feel less alone. But here are my, my arguments for that. Number one, it's not your place as a child of someone who's disabled to, to use your child to spread awareness. There are plenty of disabled people already doing that work and you can amplify their work instead of you speaking over people and 
and doing this on behalf of your child because until your child is of a certain age and they decide that's something they want to do and they want to get involved in advocacy or any of that stuff, you should really be following the lead of actual disabled people doing that work. And when it comes to helping other parents of disabled children feel less alone, that is what support groups are for. But the the internet and YouTube is not for that. You should not be blasting your, your child's life and medical issues and struggles to the entire world just because you need support. There are other ways to get support. And I do understand that, especially if if you don't know a lot about disability and not a lot of people around you are going through the same thing, you may feel alone. But I would urge people to try to find something in your community or even like a private Facebook group to do that. But still, you should not be sharing specific things about your child and you should not share in intimate de details because ultimately that is for the, the person experiencing that to share if they would like to when they are old enough to uh, do so. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of family vlogging channels that have something to do with disability will use the disability to appeal to people and to be different. If you know, and I'm, and no, I'm not saying they're making the disability up to like be something different, but they definitely do exploit it and mark it, it, it in a way where like if the whole like we're not like other family vlogging channels like the whole I'm not like other girls thing like since the family vlogging space on YouTube is so saturated in, in order to make it as a family vlogging channel, in order to gain any kind of a, a following, you need to stand out in some way. So a lot of family vlogging channels will be like, oh, well, my child is autistic, or my child has cerebral palsy, or my channel or my child has whatever their diagnosis may be, and they center their content around that because people are voyeuristic and they like to they like to see other people's lives that are different than their own, and this goes back to the whole like freak show thing of the early 1900s and disability being a spectacle. And I, I do believe that family vlogging ties into that, specifically family vlogging that has to do with disability. Because people like to see what it's like for a disabled child to grow up or they like to see different medical conditions and see people having tantrums and, and, and therapy and Botox and screaming because Botox is very painful. And I'm not saying that people are bad for wanting to see this, but I do, I do think that as anybody who consumes any type of content needs to take a step back and say, why am I consuming this 
content and my consuming it to to educate my myself and to learn about something or is it to feed some sort of like a a curiosity i feel that way a lot about what's that channel called it's the one with all the really bad reality tv shows i think it's he he all see and it has that like 1,000 pounds histories and it's a really terrible exploitative and fat phobic show and like I'm sorry but people are not watching that show to educate themselves on an issue they're watching because they like to see someone of a certain size and they find it entertaining Painting and it's kind of like a modern day freak show and I don't I'm not saying these people are freaks the people being featured but I'm saying the people that watch it view it in such a way like there's some curiosity to be observed when in fact these are just people who deserve respect and rights and autonomy all over their lives. And see, I understand that there are people who do watch family vlogging channels to educate themselves, but one question I I would want to ask these people is, are you also seeking out content that's not pr produced by a, a parent of a disabled child? Are you consuming content that's disability-led, that somebody who's actually disabled themselves ha have created this? And they have a say in the content because if not then you're really only seeing one side of it and that's through the perspective of the parent which like yeah that's a valid perspective but when it comes to educating yourself on disability that's not the best place to get your information from and there are plenty of places to get it from like there uh, I have a whole video on good disability books and at some point I'll I'll probably have another video on that when I've read enough books to warrant a, a video and there's the documentary on Netflix Rip Camp and, and there are just lots of places where you can educate yourself and find find resources that aren't as exploitative as family vlogging channels. I I cringe when I see parents f filming things like their ch children having meltdowns or or their children having me medical procedures being done and they're screaming because it's painful and the parent is sitting there f filming this for uh, other people to consume. I cringe when I see like them talking about intimate details about their child or showing how their child goes to the bathroom. Like there's no need for that. I'm sorry, I just... I don't see the educational value in that. I definitely don't see the entertainment value in that. And I just think there are better ways to go about it than to exploit your child for the sake of education for others. And I put education in air quotes because Half of the time, the content doesn't feel educational. It feels very 
voyeuristic and like they want to show like all the intimate aspects of their child's life and no I'm not accusing anybody of of giving their children away to editors so please please don't misconstrue this and say that I'm accusing people of something that I'm not accusing because it like, if I wanted to accuse people of that, I would say that straight up. I'm not going to dance around it or like, like, <laughs> I don't know what that was. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something or if you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have not already and you would like to see more of my content, please consider hitting that sub subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.